The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Oh, yeah! This is the Cigar Authority. Have uh, you any imported cigars? The authority on everything cigar, in and out of the cigar industry. We are on a mission from God. With your host... A jelly donut! David Garofalo. How did it get here? Mr. Jonathan. I hear you, and I care. Barry Stein. I'm just going to use my spare glove compartment underwear as a napkin. And Ed Sullivan. They don't have a listing for Mr. Wonderful. What uh, spelling did you use? It's time to light them up. Smoke if you got them. It's time for the Cigar Authority. I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowboy. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Saturday, March 30th, 2019. It's the friggin' Catalina Wine Mixer. It's episode number 468, which means today marks nine years of the Cigar Authority podcast. And celebrating with us is the vice president of Aganosa Leaf, the recipient of the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority, Terrence Riley joins us. Welcome, everybody, to The Cigar Authority. And you are listening to The Cigar Authority now in its 10th year, making it the longest nine. continually. No, this is the ninth anniversary. We are now in our 10th year. Yeah, okay. You screw with me <laughs> every year on this. Last year when I said eighth, you said, no, it's ninth. So I made a point to change it this year. You're not allowed to talk during my bit. All right. Now in its 10th year, <laughs> making it the longest continually running cigar podcast, awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine, awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row, the Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest, the Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. Catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog at thecigarauthority.com. All right. I got all the stats coming up later on in the next hour. But right now, uh, Vice President of Aganosa Leaf and your first time on the show. Yes, sir. So thank you. Welcome for coming in. No, thank you for having me. And uh, let's celebrate. And I have the perfect cigar to celebrate because last year we chose, we, we've been doing it, my God, since um, 1992, Cigar of the Year. And um, usually when we do and we make um, the Cigar of the Year up, we get a lot of flack. And this year we got very little. We didn't get none, but we got very little because there's contenders for the Cigar of the Year. And somebody always says we got it wrong, a whole bunch of people in, in, in some cases. But this year I would say very little. Um, and that's because the cigar outstood every single one of them. So congratulations. It's a great cigar, and it's a great company that always made great cigars, but now they have brought somebody on, which is you, and I don't know if you're going to, uh, how deep you want to get into it, but I think the major change was the attention onto the brands uh, that they make and uh, the attention to the company that always made great cigars for other people and now showcasing, um, you're there to showcase what you can do for yourselves. Yeah, I, th I mean, I think that the other aspects were there. The, the company was well organized. The company made great cigars. Yes. Just the best cigar you've never heard of is one you don't smoke. <laughs> right. And uh, we wanted to bring attention to that. So I've been very happy in the role that I played in that. Yeah. Now, uh, th this is uh, a Connecticut cigar, which, you know, we, we heard uh, people talking downstairs. I'm not really into Connecticut cigars, the people that aren't. This is the one to try if you're not into Connecticut cigars. And as somebody who loves Connecticut cigars, this is a great Connecticut cigar that I love also, but it's not your typical Connecticut cigar. I think it makes everybody happy. I mean, I think you can hand the cigar to almost anybody and they can enjoy it, even if they like something more full. Uh, there's a lot of flavor and, and complexity to it. And then if you like a Connecticut cigar and something on the milder side, it's not going to overwhelm you. So An Another unique thing about this particular cigar is it's box pressed. Yes, sir. And you don't see a lot of that when it comes to Connecticut cigars because you have such a delicate wrapper and people are afraid if they press it, it's going to be a lot of damage. Uh, I think you've got it covered pretty good that you put a, a foot band on the bottom of it. Uh, there's two bands on top of it. So that makes three bands that are on it. It's pretty protected with cellophane over all of that. Yeah, well, you have to, you know, like you said, with Connecticut, you got to kind of take a little extra precaution. Yeah. So it may, also makes it look nice as well, I think. All right. So uh, it is the Cigar of the Year. And uh, if you have one of those, uh, the folks that are listening, uh, you sh now's the perfect time to light it up with Terrence here with us. Uh, it is a great cigar. If you if you haven't had it, uh, go to your favorite brick and mortar <coughs> cigar shop and find Arganosa Leaf, Connecticut. This is the Robusto that we're smoking. Barry, what do we have on this? Well, today's first cigar, as you mentioned, is the Arganosa Leaf, Connecticut, and it's manufactured in Nicaragua by Arganosa Leaf. The size that was spoken is a 5x50 Robusto, and it features an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper, 
over Binder and Phyllis from Nicaragua, featuring that signature Ag- Agonorsa leaf. Single cigar will set you back $7.69, while a box of 20 is $135.99, which is a savings of almost $18 or 12% off the box price on twoguyscigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick-and-mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. A little darker than a typical Connecticut would be. It's Ecuadorian Connecticut. so. It, it, but even even for that, a lot of times companies go with a much lighter version, and I notice these are all tend to be on the darker side for Connecticut. Is there a reason behind that, or is that just... I think it looks nice. I, I agree. <laughs> I, Good answer. What I, it looks nice. What I get when I smoke this is I get less of the drying component that you normally get on a very blonde Connecticut. Those tend to be drier. This is a little more sweetness, a little more nuttiness. Yeah, we wanted to blend out kind of that. Sometimes you get that drier, it can, on, a, on a bad example, acrid taste you can get from a Connecticut. We wanted to kind of blend that out. So that was done. I, I don't, to be quite frank, I don't know how much the color variation has to do with that. Okay. But certainly the, the blend was created with that in mind. I could just be mind screwing myself. All right, let's give it a cut and light and see what it's all about. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. All right, so we like to take a cold drawer on the cigar and see what we have. Subtle cotton candy. Cotton candy, that's sweet. Yep. Subtle. There's a sweetness to it. Yep. We're going to get into some of the sweetness with the tobacco in just a little bit. Of why we taste that. It tastes like uh, early age tobacco. I see a nice birthday, uh, not anniversary cake coming in. Ooh. Right there on the bar. That looks promising. Well, we're kind of on the air, but beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. It's a nine, nine layer cake in the shape of the number nine it's pretty impressive yeah the the studio audience is being impressed okay let's light her up all right we're going to light our cigar today with the vertigo hawk the vertigo hawk features a single action flip top three jets and this is the only downside to the big adjustment wheel at the bottom is in your hand you can turn it down but it does have a massive adjustment wheel and features the patented Vertigo big ass tank, all for the low price of nine ninety nine. That's unbelievable. That's the Vertigo Hawk, ten dollar lighter, triple jet. How do they do it? Volume, volume. And the New England rep, Fagenorser, is also the rep. Absolutely. How perfect is that? Killing two birds with one stone. There we go. They have the, the, the lighter company. They are a factory themselves. Most of the other companies. Have the, the actually made right. it before some. the vegetarians get offended. Killing two birds with one scone. 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 You're still killing the birds well, though. Yeah. All right. Yeah, feeding still, two birds feeding. with one yeah. scone. <laughs> it's like, what, what does it matter what you and kill them eat, with? And then eating the bird <laughs> in and the scone. And then eating the bird with the <laughs> scone. <laughs> Stuffed chicken. All right. So you uh, are a um, Massachusetts guy. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. I see you studied at the University of Massachusetts. Yes, sir. Uh, history. Classical and ancient studies? Yes, sir. What do you do with that? Well, it's a good question. Like, <laughs> besides sell <laughs> cigars. No, I, so I, I went to, I did a, my bachelor's at UMass Amherst, and then I went to Exeter in England for uh, grad school, and I, I wanted to be a professor of uh, like Latin, Greek, uh, Roman history. And uh, after I did the master's, I started doing the math of, i got to get a PhD, and that's probably another four years, and i got to pay this much money. And it's not like they're beating down the doors you know, to get people to you know, teach Latin. And, you know, Julius Caesar's not showing up anytime soon. It's funny. So. You wanted to be a teacher of Greek. Jonathan's a student of Greek. Modern oh or ancient. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Takes it up to poop us. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so Darren's you're going in a completely go- different, different direction, direction than what I was talking about. Yeah. Terrence, okay. he's always going to go in the same direction. Right, yeah. So once you identify what that direction is, All you'll right. know everything. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a novice to the show. <laughs> yeah. I've watched it, but it's different with live where you, you know, take things more seriously yeah. generally. Yeah, it's not this. <laughs> but, um, but no, I mean, it's with, with, uh, with history, the nice thing is that, you know, there's applications to things and there's, you know, a lot of this industry is based on having conversations. And so people, you know, people, some guys are World War II buffs, some guys are into, you know, and so it gives you kind of a general background where you can connect with a lot of different people. So it's been valuable in that sense. I think that's maybe a little of a stretch, but you know, right. I'm glad I did it, you know, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm certainly not, uh, 
You don't use yeah. it on a daily basis? No, no, or, yeah. or, or maybe we'll watch the next brand that comes out and there'll be some influence to that? Well, I mean, I've, I've used it in, in different brands and things like that over the over yeah. the years. I'll, I'll use Latin names or something okay. like that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's mostly for my own amusement more than anything else. Do you speak Latin? I can read it. I mean, you don't really, again, like unless you're, yeah, no Julius Caesar's not around, you know, right. so, so you don't really, but I can read it. You know, I, I'm honestly rusty. I don't, I, I actually flip through uh, Julius Caesar's Gallic letters not too long ago just to catch up because he's kind of the easiest one. If you're learning Latin, he's kind of like the easiest one to learn to read. Um, so I went through that and I got through it not too bad, but it's, uh, so it's not, I'm rusty. That's like just a Sunday. Fun. Th- yeah, yeah. On a Sunday or something. You say Julius Caesar's so, letters. Yeah. Uh, you know, I get up early in the morning and, uh, yeah. have and, you ever been laid? <laughs> well, I'm, I have a son, so, <laughs> there we go, so I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was in high school and this is back in the ancient days, uh, for sure. But Latin was one of the choices, you know, yeah. and a lot of kids take Latin, French or Spanish. And boy, I wish we took Spanish. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. it's hard to learn a language in a classroom. I mean, unless you're really around people speaking it and you're forced to apply in the language, it's, it's, it's hard to learn. Yeah. To, to, you know, with, that's where Latin is more, you know, it's almost easier in that sense because you're not <coughs> speaking it, you're just learning how to read it. Whereas with Spanish, it's not that useful if you can't talk to people yeah. or French or. or no. Well, no, Terrence Riley. Yes, sir. What nationality are you? I'm, I'm a salad of races. You know, so my, uh, my father is, uh, he's half. Irish American, half uh, half Spanish. I actually have a Spanish passport, and uh, so that's one part of the family. And then my mother's half Irish, half French Canadian. So, well, okay. So I'm all over the place. But yeah, you you have uh, Spanish, and you for sure you speak Spanish, and uh, I speak I speak it well enough to to survive. So I lived in Dominican Republic for a while, and uh, and then my wife's Argentine, and I live in Miami. So yeah, I mean in Miami, most people speak English. Everybody speaks Spanish. Well, so most people speak English. Yeah. Everybody speaks yeah. Spanish. No, that's yeah. true. Yeah, I mean our our office, I'd say you know the rollers don't speak English, and a lot of them don't speak English. So yeah. you, you communicate in Spanish. So. It's good because then I get to practice a lot. I mean, otherwise, I would get lazy. And yeah. even with my mother-in-law, like she'll say something in Spanish, and I know she speaks English, so I'll just reply in English. But if I, they don't understand Eng- English, I have to speak Spanish. So, how about your children? What do you do? So we spoke Spanish in the house with him. Uh, you know, only uh, in, until he went to school, it was easier. Now that he's in school with English, he tries to go to English all the time. But in the house, we enforce Spanish. He's getting to the point where he's better than like I have to start thinking harder in the beginning it's easy you go don't touch that you know stay, you know, don't move <laughs> yeah. eat, eat your dinner you know it's mostly things like that and now as he gets older and it's you know you have to explain things more com- in a more complex way yeah. it becomes harder so it, it's going to be so important as, as it goes on that's for sure yeah. but okay let's get into cigars 2018 big year for you uh you end up uh joining um former formerly tropical tobacco which we were talking about yesterday yeah. with you um and um they changed to Casa Fernandez, uh, Eduardo Fernandez, his son Max Fernandez, I guess now is, yes, is part of it. So here's the Fernandez company um, owned by the Fernandez people. You come on and your first thing that you do is say, Mr. Fernandez, I think we should change the name of this company. Yeah, I, th- I think what we wanted to do uh, is with Casa Fernandez, it was, there was a lot of confusion with AJ. You know, people would say, oh, I love the Oval, you know, and things uh, like that. You know, and AJ's done a great job of branding his name, which is, you know, yeah. which is, you know, he can Along do. with the help from his competitors, too, because it seems yeah. everybody's branded. Yeah, so it, it, there was, and what makes us, what you always want to kind of focus on as a company is what makes you uh, unique and meaningful. You know, and so for us, it's the tobacco we grow. And so we wanted to really put the emphasis on that rather than, than uh, it be a specific name or something like that. So we changed to Agonorsa. Uh, I, I had originally envisioned doing it more gradually because I had just joined the company, which, you know, they didn't, I wasn't taking chocolate bunny heads. They had to pay me something. And then, yeah. uh, and then you know, it's a cost to rebrand. You have to do all sorts of different things, you know, invoices uh, and DBAs, all this stuff. So I had originally planned a more uh, gradual transition. But uh, to give them credit, uh, D'Angelo from uh, Illusion and Nick Malillo kind of really pushed uh, to do it you know, more immediately. And, uh, and so, you know, but they kind of got Max and, uh, Eduardo on board for that as well. And, and so we last about a year ago, we, uh, we changed the name and we did the full rebrand at once. Uh, I mean, was that a battle of, of, of a company to, you know, you walk in and say, okay, name change. You know, I have to say that overall they, they were very receptive to everything. I think they had gone through a long, they'd been around a, a while yeah. and they, and they saw how they made brands for other people that had been really successful. And they saw that their own brands just didn't have the cachet 
that, or weren't as well known yeah. as, uh, as, as the brands they make for other people using their own tobacco. And they knew that they needed to do things differently. So they were very open-minded. You know, that was a big concern for me is that if, if you hire me and then we do everything the same way, we're really not going to get anywhere. Yeah. Uh, and so right from the beginning, they've been very supportive and, and, uh, and sometimes even pushing to go faster than I even think some, oh, sometimes is, uh, you know, is good. So All right. they, they are the sleeping giant is what I would say a year ago. Yes. Not so much. They've been wakened. Yeah. And I think people have taken notice of, of what's happening there, which, which is a lot. The, the man that owns it, Eduardo Fernandez, those that don't know, you're talking about a highly successful guy with plenty of money behind him and plenty of knowledge that he's looked upon as a new person in the industry for the most part. It's, it's 20 years or so now. Sure. Um, but, you know, where did this guy come from? So his story is really interesting because some of it's familiar uh, for, you know, for the tobacco industry and some of it's very different. So he, like many guys in the industry, he's a Cuban refugee as they left after Castro arrived in uh and took power in Cuba, and they came to the U.S. But uh, they nor their parents were ever involved in tobacco. And so they grew up in uh, South Florida, and uh, Eduardo went to uh, a Wharton Business School, and uh, he was uh, VP of a bank in Miami. And it was in the 80s, and this was around the time that Little Caesars and Pizza Hut and, uh, and Domino's was becoming a, a big thing in the country. So at night, he would work at, a, I believe it was a Domino's, and kind of learned how the business operated. President of a bank. Yeah. And, and then he, he told... Imagine getting caught. Yeah, well, he told his, when he told his boss, he, he said, I'm leaving to go to Spain to set up uh, you know, a, a pizza company in Spain, you know, like Domino's or pizza in and, and that style. They thought he was nuts. They're like, yeah. you're leaving this job to do that? And so... He, well, that's <laughs> not really a country known for its fast food. I exactly. Mean, sit down it, restaurants. It's, it's almost a, exclusively. It's a traditional food market. It, yeah. was, it was like they thought he was crazy. So, he, but he went over there. He and his brother, and uh, within a few years, it became a massively successful operation. And they it, they went public and they sold it for a potload of money. And then uh, Eduardo at the time was in his forties, and you know he he always wanted to be involved in farming. And he uh, he went to Nicaragua and he got uh, involved in pigs, cattle, and and tobacco. And that's kind of the beginning. The three of, things that most people gravitate toward. <laughs> yeah, when of they course. Go to Nicaragua. Yeah, the, the delicious food and, uh, and scars. You know? uh, so so that's and then he because he, he didn't have a background in, in tobacco, he brought over a bunch of high level guys from Cuba um, to work with him for gro for growing operations. Initially, it was just growing. In fact. What's really interesting is usually when you grow tobacco, because of the cost involved, it's all, it's already it's already sold basically. Somebody you're growing it for somebody, and when it's done, that person's going to buy it from you. He started growing without any buyers because his idea was that if you put have a good product, people will beat a path to your door, and uh, and that's what happened. And and people really and and he had the working capital to be able to do that. Absolutely, people, you know, you got poor farmers, and then all of a sudden somebody like him comes in. Okay, we can do it a different way, and yeah, that's. I mean, that's one of the the, the key advantages we have is is having that 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 uh, that uh, cash flow to do that, that kind yeah. of thing because it's 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 time, tobacco is time and money, and time is money, so it's money and money. So sure. it kind of makes sense that he was on board with the name change right away because he's a guy who doesn't seem to mind complete changes of his landscape. Yeah, he. I mean, he's very. Uh, it's really been educational for me to be around him and just kind of see how he thinks. And when something isn't going in the right direction or isn't working, I mean, he 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 doesn't just keep plowing ahead. He he. Okay, let's do it this way now, or let's forget that and just moves on. And because again, you have to be that way in tobacco. There's always some problem. You know, there's too much rain. There's not enough rain. You, there's blue mold infestations that can that, that can happen. There's also I mean, there's political upheaval. There's a million different things that can uh, affect you, and you have to really kind of be able to, to, to shift on a moment's notice into yeah. a new direction. He became now the largest grower in Nicaragua. I, I believe in Nicaragua, he's the largest grower. Wow. Uh, uh, in Placencia, if you include Honduras, has, yeah. has more. But, uh, it, but he's the second largest landowner in Nicaragua because uh, he also has the pigs and the cattle. Right. Right. Which, uh, which company is more successful, the cattle or tobacco? I mean, the cattle and pigs is more money. I mean, but the the tobacco by tobacco industry standards, it's all relative, right? Sure. You know, so it's like you know, it was, you look at a big cigar company, but you compare it to you know Philip Morris or Swisher or something like that, and it's you know Swisher makes a billion units a, you know a year. I mean, the whole premium cigar industry mm. is like three hundred sixty. So it's all relative. But yes, it's been a very successful operation. Just the pigs and the cattle and those things are it's just more more people. You know, everybody eats. Yeah, <laughs> not everyone true. has a cigar. Sure. How I see um, Eduardo Fernandez is um, 
you know, like a top sports team or something that would go out and look for the best of the best, the all-star, you know, I want the all-stars, right? So the first time I went there, which is many, many years ago, um, they were trying to be top, top rollers there. And that was the first time I met Papin Garcia because they brought him in as a roller. Yes. And he was training rollers and he was uh, dealing with, with the rollers. Um, and um, the late uh, Arsenio Ramos. Yeah. Uh, the blending of, you know, you're talk, talking about bringing in the best of the best of uh, blending people. Uh, Paul Palmer, now you. And, uh, you know, you've been in the cigar industry for a long time, and they, they sure was a shining light there and said, okay, this is the guy that can take us to the next level too. So, uh, again, I think it has a lot to do with you, you got a guy with some money behind him, and he can sort out the best. When it comes to the tobacco, I'll say it's the best too, and I've, I've tried everybody's tobacco over the years, but we were mentioning it yesterday with the Maduro that I love their Maduro, and I'm not a big Maduro fan, but I love it because it is a natural Maduro. There's not a lot going on. There's no. There's a lot of tricks, and there's a lot of things I've told you guys over the years of the of the things that, that uh, how it's Steaming, messed around, bruising, with. yeah, dying. There's nothing. It's it's clean. It t- that's how it's supposed to be. Absolutely. And, and that's how they do everything, right? Yeah, do, no, it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's it's all the old school. You know, there's no tricks or anything like that. It's all just you know, what I always say is a. Uh, the, re- the reason to buy Agonors isn't because of the box. It's not because of the we, you get a backpack or anything. It's because of the cigars. It's because right. of the tobacco. That's what makes us different. Is we have incredible you know flavor profile that's really unique and uh, and and that's what makes us special. Yeah, I mean, um, I was smoking. Uh, what were we smoking this mo- this morning? The, the uh, uh, lunatic. Lunatic, um, rated not only a top ten rated cigar, but also. The best value yeah, on best. top of it. So, um, you know, you're from seed all the way through. So, you, you know, you don't have to, mi- there's no middlemen involved or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, it's a huge advantage for us because, it, it, you know, it's in terms of value, we have great tobacco, but also when you compare it to, to what it's competing against, it's usually at a better price as well. So that's, I think, the key, you know, having those two on on your uh, team are key, yeah. key elements. So now I'm, I'm, I'm reading about Max. I don't know who he is. This is obviously the son of something. Is yes. he the next guy? Yes. So he's uh, he's in Nicaragua. He, he's uh, he's at the factory every day. So Edu- Eduardo, because he has different businesses, he he's bouncing around all over the place. He's not at the factory, you know, every day. Uh, he we have, that's why he has the team that he has. Yes. But it, uh, Max is there, and he's in his uh, late twenties. He's you know, again, it's I'm starting to feel old. I'm I'm 38 this year, and. Uh, and so I see these guys that are younger, and uh, but they they got a lot of energy in there, and and he's really a lot of the changes. Like like I was saying before, he was been pushing heavily to do a lot of these things that he was completely on board, and and even to some degree, even wanting to go faster than I was comfortable going with. So he's been great uh, for for not only you know being there at the factory and and making sure everything's under control there, but also for. Uh, for just bringing that enthusiasm. So for marketing purposes and you're handling the marketing end of it also, is this somebody you're going to bring forward as a face of the brand or anything like that? The tobacco is the face of the brand. All right. The tobacco, that's what we want the focus to be. All right. uh, I think there's three types of companies. So you have kind of cult of personality companies where it's, it's kind of based on an individual, which, uh, which there's lots of successful examples of that. There's a lifestyle based, uh, you know, Davidoff is a great example. You think of the guy in the suit with the watch and uh, that's, you know, and that's, a style as well. And then you have product-based companies, which are really focusing on the product itself, and we're focusing on the product. Well, you have the quality of their product, so why, why would you not? So that makes sense. Um, as far as brands, um, if you didn't know Arganosa Leaf before, um, they've been around for a long time, but the, their success or their how people would know them was for the other brands that you make for other people, for instance. Uh, so, in fact, one of the th- things that is a I use it as a testament to the quality of our tobacco or the people we work with. So yes. we have uh, Dion Giolito from Illusion, who's known for having one of the best palettes out there. Uh, he comes down, you know, the joke in the industry a little bit is people say they blend something and they put three blends in front of them. And the guy goes, okay, B. And he's like, I blended this. And it's like, right. well, you know, I, you, you selected a blend. I mean, and, and that doesn't, there's nothing wrong with doing that, but it's not the same thing as actually sitting there and saying, put this tobacco and put that tobacco. And he really goes down there, goes through bales, tastes everything. So he's got an incredible palette. And, uh, you know, he's been recognized by, with a lot of awards. Nick Melillo, 
the Wiseman Maduro and yes. Gwensa are both made uh, in in our factory, and uh, he's he was the tobacco buyer for Drew Estate. And right. Bought a lot of Aganor, so it was a uh, was very uh, again. He knows he knows his stuff, and and he certainly could have went anywhere. Yeah, could have gone anywhere. Right. You know, could have worked with anybody. So uh, again, and the list goes on. Uh, HVC, uh, Viaje, uh, so on and so forth. And it just uh, there's a whole bunch of guys that you know choose to work with us, which is a testament to the quality of the leaf that they're Ab- using. Absolutely true. Um, not only are you in Nicaragua with a factory, but there's a factory in Miami. Yes. So we also make, we have a, we have three, four rollers in Miami. It's a small production there, but it's nice. It's that they're Cuban rollers. They roll in the old school style. So it's one roller that bunches and, uh, and rolls by hand. So in Nicaragua, Dominican Republic, in most places now, they work in the teams of two. One has the Lieberman machine in bunches. Sure. The other one puts the wrapper on. And uh, in Miami, we do it the old school way where it's one roller and... and the whole cigar's oh, him. Yeah, old cigar. Yep. Okay. And what do you make in the Miami factory? So we have some of our Casa Fernandez brands are made there. Uh, the uh, Our Corojo and Maduro are both made there. And then our Connecticut uh, and Habano are made in, in Nicaragua. Okay, is this something that our listeners could go visit? Is this yeah, open it, to the public? it's not open to the public, but if uh, if somebody's in, in town and they would like to see, one of the things we really, uh, our whole goal is to create enthusiasm among our retail partners and consumers. So if somebody's in town and they want to come by and, and I'm in the office that week, I'll be happy to have them over. We want to show, it's, it's so much easier than to show people things than to tell them. Yeah. So if they can come in and spend a half hour and have a cigar and see how we roll down there. To me, that's great. That person's going to leave and tell other people about it. If I sit here and just say, you know, we've got uh, you know some great tobacco and it's really good. And right, right. I mean, it's it, it, I'm not. It's what I'm saying is true, but it's not really that convincing. When the person comes back from a trip and says, "This was amazing," and I saw this tobacco and the guy was rolling it, and I sat there like now, now I'm much more interested in, in what the person is saying when yeah. they hear that enthusiasm. So that's what we're looking at. Much better than an all day trip to get to Nicaragua, especially where you guys are. Yeah. Which is everybody talks Esteli and stuff. That's not where these guys are. It's another. Well, we, we, we're in Esteli and Jalapa, but the, if you want to go see the the wrapper, like a lot of the growing operations in, in Jalapa. So yeah. yeah, to get up there, so it's about you fly into Managua and then you go about two, three hours to Estelí, and then you go another four or five, depending on the traffic and the you know if there's a dead donkey in the road or whatever else. Right. Uh, you know, you get to Jalapa, so it's a it's a long. How uh, big the balls are on the driver? Some of those <laughs> yeah, drivers. Yeah, yeah, it's Woo. it's the courage of the driver and uh, his skill level that determines how long it takes. <laughs> I'll tell you, I I went back in the day when it was dirt roads before uh, they even put the pavers in. It's it, better now. They've got some. It's yeah, pay, yeah, but yeah. You Used to be terrible. Oh, we, we go a certain point that everybody out. So one, the car went by itself, and we walked around to go because there's no way yeah, everybody in the car could, yeah. could make it through. And I'm like, I think this is where I'm going to die. It was crazy stuff that was there. Um, what else? Um, what is our thoughts here? Early thoughts here on Aganosa leaf. What should we be tasting before Jonathan tells us what we are tasting? What happens here? And I want to get into um, the tobaccos itself that in the next half hour. Yeah, those hour, are some ugly cigars you have there, buddy. We're, we're going to light yep. those up in, in the next half hour, but that's part of what we're smoking. Yeah, so our, our, our kind of signature flavor comes from primarily from two regions and two seeds, Corojo in Criollo and uh, Jalapa in Esteli. And uh, so this blend, it's got the Connecticut wrapper, obviously. But you've got the corojo in there, which provides sweetness. So you, the sweetness you get, I hope you're getting on this. You know, yeah, sweetness. We'll, we'll, we'll find out in a minute what, you, what we really are supposed to experience when you yeah. talk. <laughs> but, uh, but that sweetness, which is really nice. And then, uh, and then there's the criollo, which adds more, more from Esteli, but provides more uh, intensity of flavor and provides more uh, body to it. So it does, for Connecticut to me, has a good body right. to it. Sure it does. And that's coming from that, uh, from that criollo. Yeah. I, I, I try not to go too much into detail, you know, well, which everybody's different because everybody experiences things. So we're going to hear what you have to say in a moment here. And, uh, you know, but everyone has their own palate. And, and uh, the only opinion that matters is the person smoking. So I beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> of course. We are the authority, right? So, so what are we smoking, Mr. Jonathan? This what? is the most distinct flavor of white pepper I've ever tasted in a cigar. And it's not an aggressive in your face. It's very subtle, very soft. Uh, there's a little, a little hint of salt in there as well, which is a nice, a nice little balancing element. And uh, there's there's a little fatty component, Ed Sullivan, uh, from that of a of a walnut. So it's a salty, white peppered walnut. I'll agree with him on the saltiness and the white pepper, but there's also a little bit of hay and a subtle hint of cocoa. Yeah, I don't have any getting. cocoa yet, but uh, we'll see. He has that go. Right now, we're going to take a break. We c- when we come back, we're going to find out uh, what's next for Aganosa Leaf and Terrence Riley. 
uh, as the Cigar Authority celebrates nine years. We're live at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. There was a time when cigars were the hallmark of elegance and success. In this time gone by, the aficionado would revel in opening a beautiful box, only to find their favorite celebratory smoke emblazoned with a heritage-laden band. It's time to put the bundle down and travel back to this golden age. For your voyage, may we humbly suggest the only cigar worthy of being packaged in a handmade marble box. Berlin Wall Series from Hammer & Sickle. Live well. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. The Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. America's favorite love story takes on a modern zeal with this A.J. Fernandez collaboration. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta, crafted in Esteli, Nicaragua, is a contemporary take on the rich and robust profile of the Romeo by Romeo collection. This exceptional premium offering employs an aged San Andreas wrapper, considered one of the most flavorful leaves used in today's premium cigar market. Handcrafted in Nicaragua by cigar master A.J. Fernandez. Full flavored, dressed in a stunning San Andreas wrapper. Rich and bold profile with notes of dark chocolate, spice, and licorice. And available in four sizes, Robusto, Toro, Pyramid, and Short Magnum. Competitively priced under $10. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. The Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number no. 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper. Fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lighting up the Diamond Crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, Those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar Co. or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that. But there's something else happening here. A natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Kristoff cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Kristoff is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10 count boxes, four sizes including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy. The Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you, the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. 
Padrón Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. I want to tell you about my friend Hochi Blanco, a fourth generation Dominican cigar maker known for growing tobacco and producing highly acclaimed cigars for other people. If some things stay the same, other things have to change. Finally, Hochi's factory, Tobacalera Palmer, has produced a cigar that not only belongs to the factory, but pays homage to the cigar rolling room known as La Galera. The La Galera Connecticut blend is special, using an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper surrounding a Dominican blend of Piloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and a varietal that Hochi named T112. With the exception of the wrapper, Hochi grows all of the La Galera tobaccos himself and carefully watches over every step. The flavor smooth, but still offering plenty of flavor in all sizes, paying homage to the people and tools used in the factory. Now for the amazing pot. La Galera, Connecticut has a suggested retail price ranging from $4.95 to $6 and has been awarded the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority. La Galera, Connecticut, creating their own version of the Connecticut cigar because they demand more. Hola, soy Manuel Inoa from La Aurora, Dominican Republic. You are listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we are back. We're smoking the cigar of the year, Arganosa Leaf, Connecticut, with Terrence R- Terrence Riley. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about Terry O'Reilly, the uh, the uh, Bruins hockey player, and people uh, knowing. Uh, we put out information that Terrence Riley was going to be here, but people misread it. Uh, like I just did, but they <laughs> they assumed Terry O'Reilly, the hockey player, was here, and they were calling you all week long. Yeah, yeah. when's he going to be there? A lot of disappointed people. Yes. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I would like to announce that uh, Jerry Powers, I moved your locker to the top shelf. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Jerry, Jerry Powers in uh, Facebook chat said, if anybody is in tune with the taste of salty nuts, it is without a doubt Jonathan. And he nailed it. a good one. It's a good one. So don't forget the after show. We just started that up a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's recorded immediately following uh, the Cigar Authority, and then we posted, I believe, on Wednesday. And uh, Terrence O'Reilly is going to be on, and we got some tough questions, tough, unque- uh, uncomfortable questions that we're going to. Uh, just Terrence uh-oh. Riley, not O'Reilly. Just Terrence Riley. Terrence yeah, Riley. Now, now you got me going uh, <laughs> on that. Anyway, so uh, what does the future hold for this company? Where's it going to go? Well, again, it's uh, one of the difficulties of this business, I think, in general, is you know what's the legal landscape look like, what's the political landscape right. look like. So I think those all come into play. But really, I think that we're kind of just going to continue to on the path that we've we've been going. We, we want to get out there and, and promote what, what we do, what's special about us, and bring that to people's attention. And I think the cigars really speak for themselves. Once people get it in their hands, once they smoke them, they see the, how, the quality, and then they see what a value they are compared to a lot of what's out there. And I think that's really, it's a simple formula, quite frankly. Well, we are the company has plenty of money behind it, and it did not come out with lots of brands in the past, would there be acquisitions or Back to the old days when you guys bought the company, you bought the company with lots of old brands. Yeah. So, so right now, if over the past year, we really haven't. We've mostly focused on the rebranding. So nothing. There's very little new that we did since I've been on, on board. Uh, we do have a whole ton of grandfathered brands yeah. and, and things that we can utilize, and we are going to slowly put some of that stuff out there. But uh, again, I, mean, I think one of the difficulties in this industry is that there's so much new stuff all the time. It, it takes a lot to really get a cigar to have legs. You know, you have to go out there. You can't just throw it out there and people throw money at you. You go out there. You have to promote. You have to get. You have to get the staff involved. The, your retail partners. You have to promote on social media, whether it's traditional advertising on uh, whatever it is, and and that's a process. And if you if you're doing too much at once things get lost so yeah. for us it's it's a really a gradual approach and and uh taking it one step at a time but but making sure we're always going forward so what do we have on brands that are available from you guys that they can look for on store shelves your brands that are available now wait, wait so right now the, our, our kind of core lines are our are, are agonor salif uh, casa fernandez the connecticut being being one of them it also comes in corojo maduro and habano which are all excellent everyone you know kind of will like that's a style for everybody. Yep. Everybody likes one of those wrappers. Um, our our JFR uh, and JFR Lunatic lines, which uh, the price points are phenomenal on them. Uh, we, get, we they have some big ring gauges for the guys that love the the big the big rings, and then we also have uh, some more uh, traditional sizes as well. So something for everybody there. 
uh, our Guardian of the Farm line, which has been really successful. It's a collab with uh, uh, Kyle Gallus from Warped that we, uh, we put out there. It's named after the American Bulldogs that, that guard our fields. And uh, that was a top 10 uh, finisher on Cigar Aficionado as well. And that's, and that's a brand that is owned by, partnered with somebody else, but you distribute it. We distribute and we own the brand, but the, oh, the right. blend was a, was a collaboration between uh, Kyle Gells from, oh, from right. Warped and, uh, and, and Max from, uh, from on our side. And, oh, all, all right. and all the sizes on that cigar are named after the actual dogs yes. on the farm. Yeah, except the Apollo, which is named after Kyle's dog. The other three are named after dogs we have on it. Which is JJ, Campion, and Rambo. And Rambo. Yes. Some of them are nicer than, you know, the Campion is at the main factory, so it's used to seeing people. I don't, I don't know how great a guard dog that is, but, uh, the, but the one in Jalapa, Rambo, is, I wouldn't mess with Rambo. And I, and I would expect that. <laughs> yeah. Rambo's not so friendly. It's living up to his name. Yeah. yeah. First blood is last blood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, that ding ding means it's time for the matchup of the week brought to you by VS. VS means versus, but it stands for Victor Sinclair, Victor Sinclair cigars. So, um, this might be perfect for today. Would you rather be balding but fit versus <laughs> overweight with a full head of hair? So we have both on the panel, and then we have a guy that has it all sitting next to us. Or does he? He has it all. Well, you never know. There's a lot of hurt beneath the surface here. <laughs> yeah. So, Mr. Jonathan, what do you think? Would you rather have a full head of hair and, and uh... have a body like mine? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no? And now I'll go to Barry. I always thought you wanted Dave's body. He in wants my way. body. <laughs> <in a different Yeah. laughs> I've been uh, a chubby chaser at one point in my life. I've always said I'm comfortable in my own skin, but this morning I reached into the closet, tried on a pair of jeans that didn't fit, and they fit. So they fit? They fit, so it actually felt great. Oh. So Are you going to start I dieting? I don't know. It felt great. I was happy as a... They say that nothing feel, tastes better than... Well, weight loss. There's some sort yeah. of saying or something. If, I if, think it feels great. I'm not even trying. I'm just cutting back, but I'm not. It just felt great. So I'm going to go with uh, thin and balding. You'd, you'd be bald, but lose some weight. Yeah. Come on, Dave. Just Shave it, it off. Just because it felt that good. Shave it off morning. and go keto. No, I want to keep my hair, and I'd rather. I think I'd rather be fat than bald. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> If you asked me before this morning, comfortable in my own skin without it. You didn't feel good at your twenty in your twenties, right? Hey. Yeah, I've been bald since I was nineteen. How'd you 16. like it? No problem. Sixteen. <laughs> Says his brother. Sixteen. <laughs> but Terrence, you gotta give one of them up. You're gonna give your hair up or you're gonna give your body up. Go to Spain, Jeez, get a pizza. It's like, so, it's like Sophie's choice. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, <laughs> right, we, you know, and it's kind of unfair nowadays because bald is kind of cool. You know, a lot of people. Yeah, are doing you, it, you know, there's a lot, they people, have, a lot of people pull, pull bald off well. Yeah, I don't know if I could though. To be honest with you, back in the day, man, that was. Uh, you was do a have real, a luscious, luscious yeah. mop up there. <laughs> thank, oh, thank, thank you. I think, I think, feel, I think. he feels. <laughs> he, on you. he feels more uncomfortable than he did before. Yeah. I'll tell you that. Barry, can we switch seats here? Really? Uh, no. no. <laughs> Ed Sullivan, you kind of got it all, too. Listen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for fat and bald so that I can eat more and save money on hair product. Yeah? Yeah, you spend a lot of money on hair product? I'm uh, not a dollar. Right. <laughs> <I think so. laughs> You're not kidding so anybody. Whatever, yeah. whatever shampoo is in the shower or even a bar of soap, whatever. Fair enough. Okay. So now's the time where I want to ask a secret. Something that... Uh -oh. People, other people in the industry don't know about yet secrets of what's coming out or give us some sort of scoop or something to take our nine years and bring us into the 10th year because we know stuff that other people don't know and this will be the place that they find it. So we, we do have, uh, that was, I like how you phrased all that, by the Here way. Here we go. There's like a lot of guilt there. You know? yeah. <laughs> he was raised Catholic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can tell. Uh, so we have a... Uh, a wrapper that we're going to have on a brand coming out in the near future that uh, is kind of a game changer for us. It's a shade grown Maduro. Now, I, I know that sounds like that's an oxymoron. oxymoron. Yeah, a, a gimmick or something like that. But what they, I was in Nicaragua in January and they actually showed me the whole process. And what you do is we, we, we have cheesecloth, we're tobacco growing there, and we take a fourth cut, a higher grade of, of tobacco that's thicker, and we ferment it for longer. And it gives, you know, because again, Maduro is just a color. That's not a type of tobacco. It's just, yeah. it's just a shade variation. So they just ferment it for longer. 
and it produces that dark, rich color, and it has a really unique taste to it. It's a, it has a, it has a strength to it. It has a lot of presence. But uh, Maduro, uh, San Andres Maduro, for instance, uh, or Broadleaf, it has more of that grittiness, and uh, it doesn't have that kind of grit earth to it. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting that it has the strength, but more finesse. So I was looking forward to smoking that cigar, and I ran into <laughs> Terrence on Thursday, and he says, I brought two. And yeah, you go, go, I'm not getting one. That's me. the first thing out of his mouth. One for a buyer and one for our owner. You screwed me. Well, it was. Fabulous. I didn't think of it that way and at then, the time. And then Dave <laughs> comes into the the back office in Nashua and he goes, "Wow, I'm smoking this great cigar, this this shade grown Maduro." I actually cursed out my boss and got away with it. <laughs> they it, seem to be enjoying it, to be honest with you. It they were. Yeah. It, it actually <laughs> tasted better. Probably yeah. because he didn't have it, he wanted it so bad. Yeah, no, notes of envy and passive aggressiveness. Yes, it, yes. Did. <laughs> it did have, have it. I'm going to remember the it when it's time to review that cigar. <laughs> yeah. oh, I got screwed. L- listen, I love. Yeah, he's when, only going to give you a 98 right. instead of a hundred. <laughs> I love when they come out of the box, and it, it's a risky thing, you know, yeah. because you you could blow it, you know, you could ruin tobacco, and, and as they tested, they they must have ruined some. Yeah, you know, again, so, it's it's trial and error. You, yeah. you got to see what what priming is going to work. Some of it's too thin, and it kind of just gets eaten up in the fermentation. And you can't really use yeah. it. Yeah, but again, I love you, Maduro. And looking at that, and it was it wasn't jet black. It was dark tobacco, but it did, certainly didn't look like it came from the shade. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and you scratch your head, and I couldn't wait to to try it and taste it and see what it was about. And I think it's going to be everybody, especially anybody that listens to this show. They most likely geek over cigars to begin with, and how do you not try this cigar? Yeah, the proof is in the pudding. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, you can say, I, I, to be honest, even myself, because this industry, you know how it is. Somebody's yeah. like, I got tobacco that was grown in Castro's beard and yeah. it was, you know, fermented in North Korea or whatever it yeah, is. You know, had that. <laughs> yeah, but, but whatever, there, there's all these stories, you know, so yeah. it's always you're kind of like, ah, but, uh, we, you know, when you, when you smoke it, you, you taste how it's different. Tastes different. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, the, like I said, you're going to try it and find out for yourself. And when everybody has another ingredient, I mean, wow, that's now that's wrapper tobacco that you're growing. Yeah. And this is the, and, but this is the wrapper, or all your wrapper, you do not sell. We do not sell our wrapper. We produce about fourteen to 15,000 bales of tobacco a year, wow. and, and we keep about 1,500 for our, our own use, but n- none of what we sell is wrapper. The wrapper is only used for what we make for ourselves and for other yeah. you know, Illusion Foundation. Work, so so on nobody so else is getting that either. Nobody else is getting yeah. that. No. Do you now, think we, we hardly grow it. It's not a, a huge amounts of it. It's, it's tough because you lose a lot because not all of it can handle yeah. the fermentation. It sounds so gimmicky. Do you think that there'll Thanks. be industry yeah. <laughs> backlash with other people talking trash about it, other companies, because they obviously don't have it? Smo- I mean, smoke it, I guess. That's, 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 the, that's the whole thing. Smoke it and then tell me if it doesn't taste I would taste have, it, but yeah. I didn't get a sample. <laughs> <laughs> I did, yep. and it was spectacular. And now you never will. No. It was spectacular. <laughs> real and spectacular? It was real, and it was well, spectacular. Well, then I'll buy a box of it, <laughs> and I'll smoke it every day and send you a picture. Yeah, there, yeah, perfect. See? So, Everybody's a winner now. There we go. All right, so it's Snapchat, so you can't save it. But it's not that far away. <laughs> we, can, we can see it coming soon. How, yes. How, how soon? Uh, around the showtime. Okay. Yeah. You'll show it at the show. Yeah, it, it, uh, it, it. We might sneak preview it a little bit right oh. before, but depends. I heard how two guys smoke shop is going to get a one month exclusive on it. Is that true? Yeah, you know, uh, I'm, I told you when you ask certain questions, <laughs> I go kind of tonic. So I'm just, <laughs> and then I'm just going to do that till the next question. So that's one new release. So it's not a denial. Else? It wasn't a denial. It wasn't a denial. I just want kind of tonic. <laughs> Any other new releases coming out at IPCPR? So yeah, there's a there's a couple things we have that uh, we will do. Uh, uh, this past year, I think you guys had it. We only, you know, we only made 250 boxes of the uh, Anniversario Perfecto. We make a brand in Miami called Anniversario. Right. Yep. You guys had uh, it was limited to six boxes per account, yep. so it's not like nobody anybody got a lot of it. But uh, it was all hand, you know, hand rolled as we do in Miami by one individual, and it was a Perfecto shape, which we don't make a lot of Perfectos, and we're doing a, a different rendition of that this year. So that will be exclusive to attendees of IPCPR. Not Lancero though, right? Not a Lancero. Okay. No, not a Lancero. Okay. Not Lancero. Is there any additional benefit to having one person make all the cigars in a run? Well, it's on, a, on a difficult size, there is because if you know, obviously, there's different levels of skill. You know, rolling a you know a Toro, rolling a Lancero, rolling a Perfecto, you know, and he's bunching and re- rolling. She, yes, she. Her name's Elizabeth Rodil. And and how many can she make? I mean, she's going to make two hundred a day. She, no, uh, she can, she can make two hundred toros a day. Yeah. Uh, and to be honest, they could probably make more, but you don't want any more yeah. than that. Uh, with uh, with that, it was like a, about a hundred a day. Wow. 
Yeah, so it's uh, and it's so it's cool. So it takes a you know because it's only one person making them. It's only two hundred fifty boxes, but that's twenty five hundred cigars. Yeah, so it takes a little bit of time to to roll all those, and then again, it's got to pass inspection. It's got to age and everything. So it's a uh, it's it's a, it's a cool process that you know you know you can link it to one particular person that made it. It's kind of like if cigars were made at like six different factories. You know, with in, in Cuba, like there's different brands that will be made at different factories. There's different quality levels at different factories. When you have one person of a high level making something, it just takes it to a different standard. So now you ran the Perfecto last year. Yep. Was it which was successful because you sold them all? But would you look? Would you listen to the consumer that say they loved it or something, and then say, "Okay, let's put this into a regular rotation"? Well, I mean, I think that the you have to be careful with these things. If you say you made two hundred fifty of something, so part of the reason the person buys it sometimes is that, oh well, this is limited; it's not going to be out again. I want to have something special, and they buy it, and then you come and release like five thousand more of them. You know, it's right. kind of like We've well, seen that happen, yeah. Right? So it kind of hurts your credibility a little bit. Uh, so g- to be honest with you, generally we don't like like doing that. Yeah. Uh, so you know, we'll, we'll have something that's special this year that's a little bit different and, and that's how we're going to handle it. So I just think it's, you know, you, you kind of hurt your credibility when yeah. you start saying, oh yeah, there's only a hundred of these and then the next thing you know, they're, you know, they're growing out of the, they're coming through the windows, you know. Hey Dave, we, I think we got a couple minutes so I would propose that Terrence help you with the pronunciation of the cigar. <laughs> I mean, it's completely Argan- phonetic, but it seems confusing for Argan- New England. Arganorsa. Yeah, but no- I try to skip the R. I know. New England people seem to have trouble Arganorsa. with this one. Is that correct? Aganorsa. <coughs> Aganorsa. 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 So you're like, adding an like R. Agriculture. You're adding the R. <laughs> yeah, like agriculture. I'm adding the R at Arganorsa. Right. Aganorsa. No, and usually you just go <laughs> Nosa. You're just moving Arganorsa. the R around. Yeah. <laughs> I got so, a problem with the R's. So do an ag like agriculture. Agriculture. A, yeah. Ag, ag and Agonorsa. It's completely yeah, phonetic. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to work, is it's it? It's not, not so fun happen. when he's a dick to you, is it? <laughs> no, it's not a dick. I, I know what, as I'm saying it, I know I'm having well, you, a hard time with it. I understood everything you were saying. Don't worry. You I, knew, I got it. Yeah. And everybody else knew it, yeah. too, so All screw right. you. It's probably... <laughs> <laughs> it's, pro- it's probably a Latin word. Yeah, it's probably Latin anyway. Yeah, yeah it's Latin. It, what is, is it? it? No. <laughs> what is it? It's it, it, it's a uh, it, for all, most of the, like so S A the end of you know there's matasa all the the S A is incorporated in okay. Spanish so it, it they just take like an abbreviate it's like agricultura Jalapa Valley it's it's like abbreviated all into one you know Aganorsa that's so, oh all right so it, it breaks down that way all right but your factory is, has a different name. It's we, we've been referring to everything as Aganorsa now because it was confusing to have eight different names. Okay, you know, but yes, uh, the the technical term uh, name for the factory is Tapsa. And yeah. again, it's you know S A at the end. So, right. Yeah, uh, Tabacalera. The, you know, it's it's just whatever the, it means. Yeah. But you're not even calling the factory that anymore. I just refer to everything as Aganorsa. It's much oh, easier. Okay. Uh, we did, when we did do DBAs for for things, but uh, again, especially like for the import licenses and things like that, to change to actually change that part of the name, it's just easier to do a DBA because then you got to reapply for import license, yeah. and that's a nightmare. So, so those names still exist, but uh, we just did DBAs. All right. Doing okay. business as for it. All right. Thank you so much for coming on. Congratulations on the cigar reading. Congratulations on a great 2018. Thank you. No, thank and, you for this, uh, having me. And this has, yeah. been, this has been great. Now, I, I really appreciate it. All right. Barry was looking for cake. So we're going to. Uh, I was actually we, looking at the little porritos, we'll, but we could do that for the after show. Mm. Oh, I forgot all about yeah. that. Yeah, you want to mm. do it in the after show? Whatever. We'll do the porritos in the after show. Yeah. We'll do that in the after show because I forgot. And. Uh, We'll do that, and uh, we'll have cake in just in a couple of minutes when we come back. Nine years down and at least one to go. We'll tell you how we started and where we're going and where we're headed. And uh, don't forget the after show, um, which will be on Wednesday. Right now we're live in the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Stepping into the aging room has a new meaning in aging room cigars, as Rafael Nodal has traveled to Spain, where the idea for aging room Solera was born. The Solera method of aging has been used for centuries in the making of wine, sherry, brandy, and rum. The method mixes different vintages, allowing them to age together. For aging room Solera, Rafael takes several tobacco vintages and puts them in bales, where they age together for another 12 to 18 months. This allows the tobaccos to marry for a longer period of time. At the end of the aging process, 
Aging Room Solera becomes a balanced and complex cigar with a fantastic price point. Aging Room Solera, it will have you calling for an encore. In a time where humidors are overflowing and retailers' shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends. The Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX, all aged to perfection. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, each artfully crafted blend comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Sereno. To create this masterpiece, a combination of hand-selected filler tobaccos from the fertile soils of Esteli and Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a luxurious wrapper leaf to bring you an endlessly complex and majestic experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allows the blend to marry, creating unmistakable and ever-changing tasting notes that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating each and every drop. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available online at twoguyscigars.com. Sereno, a majestic cigar aged to perfection. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world. From exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of Cigar Science Basics, this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's CigarJournal.com. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th anniversary as the Decade on Steroids. The 15th anniversary has also been named to Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. The La Galera Habano uses a classic wrapper on a staple cigar for a classy company. Hi there, this is David Garofalo of the Cigar Authority, and I want, no, no, I need to tell you about La Galera Habano. The La Galera Habano is an authentic cigar elaborated with the hands of the best cigar rollers of Tabacalera Palma in the Dominican Republic. Blended around an outstanding, flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, the Dominican-grown Corojo binder, and the filler made up of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and Peloto de Oro, creating a medium to full-bodied, attractively consistent, and aromatic smoke that envies no other. I love this cigar. Have you tried La Galera Habano yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Available at Better Cigar Shops worldwide is La Galera Habano. The wait is over. La Galera Habano. Justo and his father Julio Eiroa are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa tobacco farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. An Aladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba, and after one light, this old-school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, 
a family center company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. This crop to shop operation is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. Hi, this is Tony Serino. And this is Carson Serino. From Serino Cigars, you are listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And we are back with our number two broadcasting live from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Welcome back, everybody. We're in cake. What do we have here? My mouth's full. We have a nine layer cake with chocolate, um, I think it's pudding. Mocha frosting on half of the layers in a vanilla type of frosting. Madagascar vanilla. This is fancy they, stuff. They went with different uh, cigar notes that we've had in the past. Really? On the flavoring, on the frosting. Was there Sammy any Chinese Bees. pea pods pureed into the uh, cake? Right. Sammy B's Construction and Cake, located in Danville, New Hampshire. Mm. He'll build your addition and bake a cake. For the celebration. That would be a good thing. Every time uh, the project is done, you give them a cake. Shaped like a big number nine. Fantastic. That's yeah. good. Do you remember when you did the Chinese pea pod, which, which cigar that was? No. Do you? No. I don't. Rudy, you're our fact checker. Let yeah. me know which cigar it was. How could we ever find that information out? Or some of the oddball stuff. Well, there's some rumor that Google is going to transcribe podcasts. Really? Oh, all the past ones, too? Yes. Wow. That's a lot of information. Nine years. I wonder if they can transcribe your accent. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> right. They might have issues. All right. So, Barry, tell us about these cigars we have because... We have the best listeners. Yes, we do. Yep. So uh, to celebrate our ninth anniversary and the beginning of our 10th year, Nicholas Vacusi from Collegeville, Pennsylvania, uh, placed an order at twoguyscigars.com. And within the order, he uh, requested that four cigars be handed out to the panel. Wow. And uh, Dave is smoking the Atabe Ritos, which is a six and one eighth by 55, which is a $33 cigar. I see what you did there. You. <laughs> You got him to read about the four cigars so you could shovel cake in Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. And a box of 30 of Doritos is $9.89.99. Uh, for Mr. Jonathan, he has a Byron Grand Poema, which measures 6 by 56 and it's also a $33 cigar. And a box of 25 is $8.24.99. And for our producer, Ed Sullivan, he has the Byron Petite Poema, which is 4 by 50 which is a 1999 cigar, or 4.99 for a jar of 25. And then, lastly, I'm smoking the 100 rated Atabay Spiritus. You can't say it's 100 rated because you rated it 100. Why not? It's official. That's like liking your own post on Facebook. Roger Ebert couldn't say it was a thumbs up movie. Roger I Ebert could say it on, on any movie except the movie that he made. Well, I didn't make the cigar. Right. You made the rating. And he made the rating. He gave wow. it the thumbs up. And so then, I'm smoking the 100 rated out of a spiritus. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he is. Which is seven and a half by 40, and it retails for $30 a cigar or a box of 25 at seven forty nine ninety nine. And if you're too far away from a brick and mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. And Nicholas, we thank you very much. Thank very, very, very much, nice. Nicholas. Not necessary. Thank you. I feel funny when somebody buys me a cigar because I sell the cigars. In this case, I sold him the cigars and he gave them to me. It's a grand slam is what we call that in business. But I, I feel bad. But I, I appreciate it. And I, I didn't want to disrespect you and not take it. So thank you so much for it. This is my favorite. Ba Barry, you're smoking an Atabay also. Yeah. But I'll tell you, with Atabay, the Hachisos, the little one, and the, and the Lancero, they do not give a proper flavor profile to the brand, I don't think. 
They came much later on in there, and it's just missing some of the components in it, which doesn't because taste like out of it. Has, it has to do with the ring gauge, I think. He's using he has to go a, a priming lower on his Lajero component because otherwise it wouldn't burn. Right, and you can get more fillers in a larger cigar. There's more leaves, yeah. which will enhance that sweetness. Um, but when I first started working here, you had given me an Atabay, and it totally changed the way I look at cigars. But not a Lancero. Not a Lancero, but this happens to be my favorite yeah. Atabay size. I, I urge the people that are going to smoke Atabay not to smoke the Lancero yes, or the Hachisos as, as their first Atabay, because I just think it's, I don't know, I've even said it to Nelson himself, that it does not properly... Give the taste of what the brand is all about. What I will say it is... It doesn't have to be this big one. You can still get the the smaller, thicker one, which is the... Uh, you want the Brujos. Duenas, Brujos. You Brujos. want the Brujos if you want to know what the Ritos taste like. Because the Brujos and the Ritos, to me, are identical. Yes. And this is just in speaking <coughs> to Nelson, it's almost exactly uh, twice the number of grams of tobacco in the filler. Yeah. On the Ritos to the Brujos. And going into the whole Catalina uh, wine mixer... Yeah. Talladega Nights? Uh, no, uh, Step, Brothers. Step Brothers. But same actor. Yeah. Right, is Ed Sullivan referred to the Hechizos, and it stuck with me as the Baby Jesus. Baby Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Jesus. What a beautiful cigar. The, uh, I love it. I, I got, love this cigar I got so approached much. by one of our listeners, Ernest. I'm giving you a shout out, Ernest. He said, uh, I, you guys are really going to drink wine on the show? Hmm. And I was very confused. And I said, no, I, we're not really wine drinkers. What, what? And he goes, that's all you guys talk about is the wine show. It's the wine show. It's the Catalina it's Wine the Catalina mixer. Wine Mixer. So I hope he watches <clears throat> Step Brothers. So what happened was the, the day we did the show, which was, I believe, April 1st, 2010, the first show. That night, we're getting ready to do the show at nighttime. The, the store is closed. There's nobody here. And we're going to actually tape two shows just to see if we can do this thing and how everything works. And apparently, it had just hit HBO or whatever. And we were talking nonstop about that movie of every line that was on there, and it's the Catalina Wine Mixer, and the show's ready to go off. And we said, okay, it's the Catalina Wine Mixer. Let, let's go off. And here it is every year of it becomes the Catalina Wine Mixer. So that's the back end of why we continue to say that. And inside joke that nobody would get and... That's part of the thing, too, that you got to try to stay away from that stuff. But we'd like to let you in on everything. So uh, let's give our cigars a, a, a cut. And Could light. we, please? Uh, about time. <laughs> yeah. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand. While all other brands are raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellent. So light up your favorite cigar. And use a vertical lighter because they're a sponsor too. Mm. I could just live on the cold drawer of this. And that's how I feel with Atabay because it's cherries. Cherries. You blind tasted me on the cigar yeah, before. I've done it. You get the I gotta, cherries every time. All I do is taste the no band on it, cold draw. Oop, that's Atabay. No, it's not. I said, okay, <laughs> it, it is. I've never said no, it's not. <laughs> yes, you have. When it is. Yes, you have. I just say, ooh, that's interesting. Yeah. Another interesting thing about today is we're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Hawk. The Vertigo Hawk features three jets, a single action flip top, the patented Vertigo big ass tank, and an easy adjustment wheel, all for the low price of nine ninety nine. That's the Vertigo Hawk. It's unbelievable. Once again, a TAA. I brought my Vertigo lighter on the plane with my carry on. That's right, FCC or whatever the hell they are. <laughs> No, FCC would be radio and yeah. television. Now but I don't. Now I don't know now, what it is. I'm, yeah. draw, I'm drawing a it's blank. Not TSA, TSA. 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 Yeah. There we go. You get you get into my head sometimes. Mm. Arganosa. Aganorsa. <laughs> Agon Aganorsa. Aganorsa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I was digging through to see if I could find. Um, the Cigar Authority. So I put a press release out right before the Cigar Authority started, and it almost plays to what I thought the show was going to be about and how this thing was going to go. This is before episode even one came out. 
And it's the Sky Authority to appear weekly on a computer near you. Salem, New Hampshire, April 1st, 2010, the Cigar Authority, a new internet broadcast. So I didn't even know it was called a podcast. It's an internet. It wasn't a podcast oh, okay. at that point. It was just video. <clears throat> internet broadcast featuring premium cigars, accessories, and lifestyle programming launches Saturday, April 3rd at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on www. So I had to do that at that time. The CigarAuthority.com. The first show will be broadcast from Two Guys Smoke Shop at 304 South Broadway in Salem, New Hampshire. The live weekly two-hour program is believed to be the first of its kind focusing on premium cigars, their related accessories, and lifestyles. I didn't know if there was such a thing. I looked around to see if I could find anything. Every Saturday morning, a team of knowledgeable and affordable, A-F-F-A-B-L- Affable. Affable, so likable. Okay, <laughs> co-hosts who are expert in their respective fields will smoke, talk, and judge premium cigars, cigar accessories, and the finer things in life. We may participate in fine wines and great food, as well as premium cigars. Said Tommy Grella, former Food Network TV chef, financial planner, and cigar junkie, who is one of the Cigar Authority co-hosts. Grella said the fast-paced program will include guests, phone-ins, contests, giveaways, information, and fun. So you fake interviewed him for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to get the quote. I got a quote He's from sitting there in the office with you, spewing yes. this. Yes. Nightclub, comedian, and cigar smoker, funny guy, and I'll leave the name blank, also will be on the panel. He will help keep things moving along while sharpening his cigar smoking skills at the same time. He was not a cigar smoker. He was just a comedian. He still is. And he added zero to the show. Yeah, it wasn't good. We couldn't even get him to tell jokes. We couldn't get him moving things along. He was a deer in the headlights. Uh, It was a bad choice. And after the second show, which we did two in a row, I said to Mr. Jonathan, I look at him and I said... Do, are you going to do this or am I? And you said, I got this. I got it. And uh, he was uh, nicely let go. David Garofalo, owner of three Two Guys Smoke Shop retail cigar stores in New Hampshire, will provide his 25-year tobacco experience to the program, which will be broadcast live from one of each of his uh, stores each week in full view of all who come in the store. This was a mistake, yeah. <laughs> and it was a but, nightmare. But we did it. We did it on the show floor each week. The very first day that we did a Saturday show, a dude walks in with a parrot. Yeah, a parrot the size of a large Big, cat. Yeah, I mean, just Big. sitting on his shoulder like there's not a parrot there, but there is a parrot there, and he's walking around the store. And Dave's trying to, at the time, trying to be a newscaster, tapping yeah. his papers, <laughs> and trying to be professional and read his yeah. copy. And what we should have done was talked about the friggin' parrot. Because you can hear us pausing and you just know, making believe like it wasn't happening. Unbelievable. Re- There's a guy with a parrot. Remember, and maybe five or six weeks later, one guy actually drops at the register right he in front of up. us. <laughs> Boom, he goes down. <laughs> and we're still trying to do it straight faced and not say exactly what happened. And, and I'm looking like, oh, my God, is this guy dying or what's going on? Now, he, if any of you have a heart attack, we're going to start the commentary yeah, on our live I'm studio audience. And, and I will agree that Jonathan was telling me from the start, forget this. Just wing it and just say whatever's going on and, and stop doing it. And I go, no, we got to be professional and try to do this the we're right not way. And professionals. Act it. And uh, <laughs> that, that quickly went out, out the window. On the control board running the show is Mr. Jonathan, an entertainer, director, and professional DJ, um, professional DJ, who will manage the show's production and chime in as a seasoned cigar smoker himself. He was a customer. What, what the uh, hell did you direct? I've directed many small films on the YouTubes <laughs> they and don't the cut, Facebooks. That, that, those type of films don't count as films. Yellow yeah, with the yellow <laughs> ribbon on the thing. Reruns of the show and information about upcoming programs will be available on the Cigar Authority website at www.cigarauthority.com. So that was the press release of that. And uh, you, you look at that every once in a while to say, okay, we've got to get back to, um, you know. The Drinking? Co- no. Talking about. You did reference <laughs> drinking early on. Yeah, that was because that was Tom Grella who was big into the food, culinary stuff. He used to bring food every week. Every week. 
Every week we'd have a meal during the show. <laughs> it's pretty good. Not just a, a piece of cake. Not that the cake wasn't great, by the yeah. way. I take that as a challenge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it was good. It was a good part of it. But right now, let's find out what's up in the cigar world with Barry Stein. It's time for What's What's Up up? in the Cigar World, brought to you by Recluse Cigars. You want to know what's up? Recluse Cigars is what's up. Voted the 2015 Cigar of the Year is the Recluse Amadeus Reserva Habano. Every Recluse cigar goes through eight, count them, eight fermentation cycles over the course of two full years. They are box-pressed and rolled end to bar for a perfect draw every time. If you haven't done it yet, be sure to try a Recluse cigar today. And as we alluded to earlier this week, Dr. Scott Gottlieb issued a statement announcing the FDA plans to update its substantial equivalence process. That process will be detailed on April 2nd, and we might have actually spoke about that before the show. In Utah, a bill that progressively raises the tobacco age from 19 to 21 over the next two years was signed into law by the governor. However, it provides an exemption for those in the military, their spouses, and dependents. Meanwhile, in Washington State, the House and Senate... Hey, hang on a second. Yeah. Hang on a Dependence. second. Dependents? So the guy is 20. Right. He's married. He's got a kid. Yep. And that he, he can light up. His wife can light up. And his kid can light up? No. <laughs> and by dependent, he could have a twin brother that's a little bit challenged or something, that's a dependent, that's under his you know, what? taxes. What? <laughs> you know, you, why, you could have a it? dependent that's a family member that's not necessarily a kid. All right. So now this guy gets older and his kid is 18 years old. And well, 19 he would have to be in Utah because their legal age is 19. So he, the kid turns 19. And his dad served in the military, so he can smoke. He could buy the product. Not smoke it. Gray area. I just was looking for some clarification yeah, there. Very gray area. Uh, is, is there a politician out there who doesn't have his head completely jammed up his own ass? At the no. same time, they're trying to make the, the voting age 16. Yep. At the same time, this shit goes on. It's crazy. Well, the bill's now on the governor's desk, and he has stated he will sign it. Oh. Uh, which made them the ninth state to do so. The state of Florida has introduced a Tobacco 21 bill that has recently passed committee, and it now moves to the Senate. And the U.S. House has once again introduced a bill that will provide an exemption for premium cigars. However, it differs from the current version in the Senate. The difference removes flavored cigars from the definition of a premium cigar. So it could have all the characteristics of a premium cigar, but once flavor is added to it, it would not be exempt. New to TwoGuysCigars.com this week is the Avo Improvisation Series Limited Edition 2019. I saw that. And lastly, according to our well-placed sources. How was it? It was really good. Yeah. Beautiful box. Beautiful box. Yeah. Box-pressed Avo. Classic Avo flavors with a little bit of a, a newer edge to it with a little bit of spice. It was uh, it was very good. Okay. And lastly, according to our well-placed sources, we found out Mr. Jonathan was out of the closet on date night with a strapping young lad oh, who was God. carted at a cigar bar on Thursday. The happy uh-huh. couple was seen laughing together while enjoying a cocktail. Hey, you want to explain that? Because that, that, came, that got down to me first thing in the morning. This was a very young man. He's like 25. I don't think so. Is it the guy that was buying you drinks last weekend? No. Was it a second date? Was it a follow-up? No, you're making a, a whole conspiracy out of nothing. <laughs> I met a, a former gymnastics student. He said, you want to meet for a scotch and a cigar? And I said, sure. So I bought him a scotch and a cigar. So you were out on a date with a flexible young man. <laughs> <laughs> there was talk about this, and I, I, I stood up for you, and I said he was at least 21. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And this is while you're on vacation. This is what you do. I, this is what I did <laughs> one time. All right. Next week, you hear about shows that jump the shock, right? Mm. Well, we figure we're in the 10th year at that point. So we're going to start trying things. You're taking shots at things that maybe we should or shouldn't do. I'm going to go uh, with we probably shouldn't because you're starting that way. The secret cigar rep, Rep X tells all. We'll bring in a rep. We got a voice changing machine. Even if we have an audience, it's already taped, and we'll go to that segment so that person won't be seen, so that they don't lose their job or to get themselves in any trouble. But they're going to tell all 
from a cigar rep's point of view, and they're going to talk about the cigar store, stores, the manufacturers, and even the consumers. And it's not pretty. So catch that next week. And um, looking forward to April 13th, we got Jim Price from Aroa, and we're going to have the first 20th Colorado, and we're going to dig into my vault because he's a guy that's been around in the cigar business for a long time. Yes, he has. And dig out some old cigars uh, and smoke them with him. April 20th, we got the Backwoods Show. We're going uh, backwards on April 20th uh, with the back-to-back people from Nicaragua. Everything we do we're going to start with... What the hell we're is do wrong it with Totally back. This is what you do when this I'm on what vacation? I do. You come it. up with this bullshit? I do. And April 27th, Barry has been saying he wants to take charge. Like, when I go away, you're in charge. But he wants to be in charge completely. That's when the whole thing's going off the rails. There it is. So these are all are you oddball gonna stuff. Well, I'm going to be here. You host, I fall asleep. So let me try. So we're all taking each... Not Dave, Jonathan. We're taking each other's spot. So Barry's going to be Dave. I'm going to be Mr. Jonathan, and Mr. Jonathan's going to be Barry. Well, or, if I'm in charge, could Ed Sullivan be Barry and Mr. Jonathan be Ed Sullivan? No. <laughs> you could do that. No. The, I'm not doing the board on this show because I get nervous. And we'll have a guest on that show as well. And we'll have a guest. Uh, whatever you want to do because it's going to be our show. So we're going to start seeing some change-up things, and we'll, we'll just throw some <laughs> shit against the wall, see if anything <laughs> sticks, and uh, see what happens. Kind of like testing spaghetti. Yeah, it's our, t- it's our tenth year. We'll be in it. So uh, we'll see what ends up happening there. So that's what's coming up. All right, let's look at some stats. You're going to have to write your own asylum that way. Yes, I'll, I'll be you. <laughs> well, yeah. you're going to be Jonathan. Why not the two oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be Jonathan. So Jonathan Jonathan's writes the asylum. asylum. Yep. So what do I do? Nothing. Just make fun of people nothing. and exactly. come up with Chinese peapods <laughs> as tasting notes. There we go. I'd be willing to bet my left testicle that that day we get up and there's no ashtrays, there's no lighter, there's no cutter. You're wrong. Because he won't be prepared. I'm going to look to see if I can find a bald cap for Dave to wear. <laughs> bald cap? <laughs> All right. Yeah, he's going to have to pa- pack on some pounds. Oh. You better start now. <laughs> <laughs> this, thing, this thing come easy, let me tell you. Um, looking at some stats, the United States is obviously our number one ranked place people listen to us. 90% of the people who listen to the Cigar Authority are in the United States. 3.33% in Canada, United Kingdom coming in third place at 09 followed by Australia, Sweden, Germany, and it goes on and on and on. Russia, we got 1% of the people listening from Russia. Um, what else do I have? Some oddities. Cuba, um, 0.2%. Which is maybe so a dozen people. Canada has gone up from last year. Yeah. Yeah, they were in the twos, and now they're in the threes. So, my God. We're getting big in Canada. We're big in Canada. Thailand, Norway, India. Well, Thailand, they have that cigar bar where they watch the that's shows. Right. I think it's on Wednesday. Yeah, so <clears throat> if they, they do. They the screen. So, that only counts as one person. And right, it might be 30 people watching. Or two. <laughs> going with 30. All right, go with 30. Sri Lanka, Bermuda. Lots of others. Do you think it's like that scene in Good Morning Vietnam where they're using the show to teach people to speak English? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I hope not because... Uh, this is a bad example. <laughs> um, what else do we have that we have here? Um, the, this is really, we said 468. This is really 470 shows because the original first two or something never got into a podcast. They were never made into a podcast, yeah. right. Um, and um, back then, in order to turn a video into audio, you had to play the video in its entirety and record the audio, and it just sounded like crap. The oldest thing, the oldest episode I can find on Podbeam is June twenty eighth, two thousand ten. And by the way, we used to do those shows at ten a.m. Right. So we used to come early in the morning and start chain smoking at ten a.m. Um, and that was with um, Nikolai Volkov, the late, oh, great nice. Nikolai Volkov. That's the first thing I could find. We smoked hammer and sickle cigars, drank vodka. We had Colin Ganley from Cigar Journal, who was actually the head of Cigar Journal at that yeah. time. Um, editor. He and called in, right? I think he, he called must in. have. Yeah. I don't think he was ever here. Um, also, um, we broadcast on radio. 
Right. We had, I believe, at the beginning, a simulcast on radio live. Uh, Yes, it was live. Seven stations. At the beginning, it was one, and then we built it up to seven stations, and we started getting bumped off for Spanish Red Sox baseball. Yeah. (laughs) Well, that was the original deal with Spanish Red Sox baseball, and then it was college basketball once in a while. And when it got down to the women's lacrosse team yeah. from the local high school in the championships, we were like, all right, that's it. So that was June. Then we get to July 19th, 2010, a day that will go down in infamy. Mr. Jonathan quits. <laughs> he quits. He walks out. He said, that's it. Although I did I'll not give you- walk out. I gave you a six weeks notice or... Or as much time as you need was how I worded it. That I would not leave you high and dry. And on the day that I wasn't supposed to work, the very first day I showed up, Chuck's computer crashed and I had to go out to my car and get the backup stuff because I had the backup stuff and plugged it in and got the show up and running. Late, but it was up and running. All right. And it's true. It's true. So that's when Chuck Morrison jumps in. Um, August 7, 2010 was the seven stations. That's when we uh, uh, got up to seven stations. And that's when Mr. Jonathan started coming in visiting. Because the show, the show was terrible without me. It was terrible. So You he, were bringing customers on. And listen, I was. I was. We <laughs> love our customers. But when you're at the point where you're just like, hey, you, got, you just walked in. You want to come sit down and do a show with me for two hours? It's like, all right, he needs somebody. And we, and we brought in um, the bloggers and stuff. Yeah. And that's the first time we... we uh, Knew who Barry Stein was, and you regretted it ever since. No, but I go back and listen to that. Well, Jonathan, the, has. I swear to God, it was the only good one. Thank you. Everybody else was afraid to talk. I know you guys write for a living and stuff, but it was like, wow, there was no social skills there. There was nobody was, uh, you know, I'd ask a question, I'd get a one-word answer. Yeah, with one of them, I finally said, "Listen, this is a two-hour show. These one-word answers aren't going to cut it. You're going to have to step it up." The, f- the first year was a rough year of many, many changes through the year. September 11, 2010, Tommy Grella took a week off to go bowling. He never came back. <laughs> <laughs> never came back. That was it. Um, and then um, on November 13, 2010, we had the contenders for the Cigar of the Year. And... Whatever bright idea we had, we smoked them all. Yeah. (laughs) It was eight cigars in that pack. We smoked all eight. 35 cigars were smoked, all in a two-hour span. I remember the piles of cigars that were there was ridiculous. Uh, July 5th, 2014, Barry. What happened then? Uh, I joined the show. You did. That's when Barry came on. Um, And And uh, that's when we became the heaviest cigar Yes, we did. We won by weight at that point. And um, Chuck Morrison leaves uh, in June 24, 2017. Ed Sullivan comes in and joins in. And um, that is it. Um, we, we, looking forward ahead, November 9th will be 500. Well, will really be 502, but we can yeah. prove 500. Right. So we'll call it 500 because I don't want no sketchy stuff after mm-hmm. somebody ends up saying we don't we don't make it. So yeah, We gonna... discussed that a little bit yesterday, and we'll see where that goes. Yeah. Have a few ideas about that. And Which then, means drinking. You could just say it at this <coughs> point, Barry. November 16th will be 501, and um, March 28, 2020 will be 10 years. Uh, we'll have uh, broken every record at that point. And um, so we do an April 4th, 2020 show, which is, puts us over on everything. And then we make a decision at that point. But we're good till April 4th. 2020. So people have to committing to through this for at least another year. And then we com- we decide whether to do it, and I don't know, you know, where do we go from there? As I am, am saying to myself, you know, maybe we make the show a little short, or maybe we do whatever, we end up adding on the after show. <laughs> yeah. Which, <laughs> when, when Terrence was talking about his boss, Eduardo, and how he has no issue kind of shucking and jiving and flipping and flopping and trying this and trying that, you are so the opposite of that, where you started the show, it was an abysmal failure for that whole first year, trials, tribulations, and you just kept going, kept going. Watch it. Everybody quit going. around me. <laughs> I'm not a quitter. You are not a quitter, to your own detriment sometimes. <laughs> not a quitter. It worked out. 
Worked out. Okay, let's take a peek into the asylum from our friends at Asylum Cigars. They're coming to take me away, ha-ha. They're coming to take me away, ho-ho, hee-hee, ha-ha. To the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats. And they're coming to take me away, ha-ha. It's time for news from the Insane Asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true, or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars, Take No Prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars, with sizes ranging from 4x44 to the absolutely insane 8x80 Asylum Cigars. A man and woman went out on a date recently where they went to see Canadian rocker Brian Adams. Not being happy with their seats, they moved closer to the stage where another person began taking pictures of the 34-year-old woman. Not having any of that, the man punched a happy photographer and the couple was thrown from the concert. After the concert, the man told his girlfriend whose reaction was straight from the heart and he did it all for love. Ah, These are the songs. However, she wasn't having any of that when she tried to send him to heaven by stabbing him with plastic silverware, mm. which turns out really cuts like a knife. And that's not only insane. Ah, see what he did there? It's asylum. You got to appreciate that. As really a, stretching a, when you're going to <laughs> Brian Adams puns. <laughs> yes. You've reached the bottom of the barrel. There was no penis or balls or anything in there. I'm very disappointed. Yeah, I'm very disappointed. No, no summer of 69. No, that, one was, ah. that was too easy. You know, <laughs> I could have put up how they made up and we lived the summer of 69. Giggity, but... Here we go. All right. What are your thoughts here on the cigars you're smoking? Ed Sullivan, we'll start with you this time. What do you think of that? You got you got the Byron Petit Poema. I love this cigar. You know, I think it's, first of all, I'm very appreciative of our listeners. Yeah. And I'm a small format kind of guy. It's a perfect so cigar for you. This is one that And I, I'd say it's the strongest of every Byron cigar there is. Right. And so like, I, I often go to this one. Yeah. Perfect. Barry Stein, long and thin. It says you all over it. I see <laughs> this. <laughs> I see this on the shelf and I run to you. It is <laughs> the cigar of all cigars. That's it. It's a hundred rated cigar. Yeah. There is none better. That's the best. Okay, Mr. Uh, Jonathan. I can hear Aaron's eyes rolling at that comment. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron from the Ash Holes is here, and that's, that's right. That, if you haven't caught the Ash Holes lately, catch the Ash Holes. It's it's rocking, it's rolling. There's different people in there. They're going through the same stuff in 2010, right? Aaron delivered quite the zinger to Mr. Damari this week. <laughs> Very classic, classic Aaron. I think Mr. Damari needs a, and I know he's listening, needs a name like Mike the Mouth Damari or something. <laughs> Michael Motormouth. Well, we, Motormouth to my Motormouth. We call him ketchup, but that, that yeah. has a whole story behind it. Yeah. Uh, as far as the Grand Poema goes, this is my favorite cigar of all time. Very subtle pepper, the sweetness, a little bit of cedar component in there. It's just, for my palate, it is perfection. I'd probably give it a 99. The amazing thing is this is all the same person that makes all these cigars, including the Atabay Ritos, which I'm smoking. And, you know, having cigar stores all these years and going to all the trade shows and a lot of people asking me, what, you know, working the store all the time, what's your favorite cigar? Never could to do it until I smoked Atabay. And if you smoke it, you'll see why. It's different than everything else. It has a different component to it. There's something different, much like the shade-grown Maduro, right? Yeah. Nobody else uses it. Well, I wouldn't this, know. I didn't try it. Oh, you didn't see it, but it's really good. <laughs> so it's as different as that. There's different. There's something different in here that doesn't appear in anything else. Even if I go to Byron, yeah. there's something different about this one. Maybe because it's lighter and I can actually get the flavors of what's happening. But um, Nelson tells me it's the cedar where he uses five different cedars in this room that inhales and exhales this for five years and then ends up bringing on this taste, but nothing will taste like this. So loving it anyway. All right, that music means it's time to go to break, and when we come back, uh, 34, 32 more shows. That's all we need to, to round the number off um, and hit the 10-year mark. No, should that be 52 right? 52 to break the 10-year mark. Oh, 52. Read your to, notes. Here it is. 32 more 
uh, and 52 more to break the 10 year mark. 32 more for what? For 500? 500. For 500. Okay, we'll talk about that and more. We're live at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let's talk a little about Rough Rider cigars. So here is where the motorcycle culture meets Cigar Nation. This badass looking cigar uses the name Rough, but delivers a smooth as silk ride each and every time. Even before lighting one, you can't help but notice it's sweet like honey flavor. Smooth and creamy, resembling slightly sweetened butter. Outstanding! The Rough Rider Cigar is so beautiful in so many ways. We're talking a premium cigar, imported, long filler cigar, but wait till you hear the price. Every cigar is in the $3 price range, that's right. Even the Churchill in the 6x60, every cigar is in the $3 price range. Rough Rider Cigars, there's nothing rough about Rough Rider except the name. Rough Rider Cigars. The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars in the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavada number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Surgeon General warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican cigar manufacturing. Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Andullo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma, and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameron binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua, and Andullo. Available at top retailers like twoguyscigars.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar and Company. It's time to light that cigar and stay tuned. Ooh. The Cigar Authority will be right back on the United Podcast Network. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake. Jose Dominguez, not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donut. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more, it's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. Legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. 
the nearly 175 year old H. Upman brand in collaboration with storied cigar maker A.J. Fernandez bring a medium to full bodied, sweetly balanced, and yet complex smoking experience. Boasting an Ecuador Sumatra wrapper, this cigar produces incredible aromas and nuances of sweet spices. Today, almost 175 years later, the legacy of H. Upman lives on a brand new take on an age-old brand. Handcrafted in Esteli, Nicaragua by Cigar Master A.J. Fernandez. Available in four sizes, priced under $9. A legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. Hi, this is Brian Charles, living in Bangkok, Thailand, Mr. Jonathan's favorite city. And you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. You like Bangkok because of the name. They're everywhere. They're listening everywhere. Uh, we're back and we're smoking our favorites thanks to Nicholas Fatuzzi, a gift from a listener. Isn't this nice? That, Very nice. And I'm loving it. Um, I think we all are. Um, and while we're at that, it's, it's the listeners. If it wasn't for the listeners, why would we be doing this? I think I would have gave up. But there was somebody on episode one that was there. And he's still there today. He's still there, which is Rudy. Rudy in Canada is the best. Imagine all that time. And also, uh, not only all the people listen, to, all the people that come to see the show, that there's a studio audience here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, maybe some guys back there, twelve, <laughs> at least a dozen. Uh, I'm amazed. Every Don't you all time. have homes? <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice, though. That somebody comes to it, and I don't know. I'm just am, I'm amazed. <clears throat> Nine years into it, even the first time somebody knew me, me and Ed Sullivan went through it when we were in Florida, of people knowing us from this show. I'm just amazed by it, and I'm grateful. Thank you all for doing it. Um, also, uh, it's the manufacturers and stuff, and I'm, I'm going to get to a list right after the offer of the day of uh, the different manufacturers who believed in us even early on. But right now, let's get to the offer of the day and because it's our anniversary i'd like to really do it we should really do something and Uh, i'm not i'm actually not prepared to do it this week but we'll do it at the beginning of next week which would be starting the 10th year and wouldn't it be nice to actually do one of these things and it'd probably be good for ratings and i'll give you a thousand dollars in cash to do it but it's the 10th year wouldn't it be ten thousand no it's you make a good point ed sullivan (laughs) just trying I'm out in any case, but just you haven't for even you. heard it. How are you out? It's a thousand dollars. Get hit by a cattle prod. Hmm. Um, Where? In the studio. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We on the on your side, I guess. As long Boom. as we're not talking testicles, I, I might do it. Thigh, buttocks. Where are we going with this? I think you hit when him you right say, on the side. Right when you Boom. say get hit, you mean like a club no. or? No, it's jolt, a jolt. It's a jolt. It's a jolt. Boom! And it takes the cow down. It's going to take you down, too. Uh, no, it's $1,000. I don't think you die from it or anything. We don't think so. It's, we'll see. We'll it's see. It's four cattle. They're 3,000 pounds. All right, The Barry. only one close to that is yeah. Barry. I'm How a about couple you? hundred pounds away from that. <laughs> I'm in. Would you do it? I would do it. I've been hit with a taser. I, I happen to have a cattle prod. <laughs> We have a cattle I, prod. Uh, my old cigar store. We have a thousand dollars. I happen to have a thousand dollars. My old much? cigar store in New York. We, we fooled around with a taser. I got hit with a taser. Hmm. Hurt like a bastard, but as much as I would love to down, see you lose continence, but you start down. I, and, uh, I put my hand on a table to hmm. brace myself, and he went down. No, really. Yeah. Now the cop that did it said it wasn't fully charged, so. Why would he have an unfully charged taser on him? Well, we were talking about it, and he brought it in, and he made sure it wasn't fully uh, charged. Well, you, they, they have selectors on them, so you, when they talk about fully charged, you just turn the selector uh-huh. all the way up. As much as I would like to see you lose continence and possibly shit your pants, <laughs> I strongly <laughs> advise against it. A man of your health should not be jolted by electricity at that level <laughs> for he any reason. He has a point. He has a point. Certainly not for money. we got to do one of these, and we did do one. That Mr. Jonathan ended up eating a scorpion. As did I. Okay. I gave Barry my stinger. 
Oh yeah, and, and he ate that too. He, that. he didn't know he ate it, but he ate it. <laughs> but we got we got to do some of these things because I think this is what's going to take us. And then after over we the uh, ate the scorpion, we were ripped off by a brand owner. Hmm? We decided to do it at events. Ah. Oh, you mean Steve Saka, who doesn't listen to the show? Correct. Oh, just checking. All right, so let's thank our, all our um, advertisers um, or what I like to call supporters of the show, their partners with us. Um, and it started with Hammer and Sickle. Yes, it did. And, um, you know, I had um, Eric Wentworth, who now took over. Uh, he was in the store the other day that's really starting up again. Uh, I said, listen, if you want to back off, I understand whatever is going on with the company and it's... You know, no, no, we're staying on, we're staying on. So I, I gave him the, the out if that's what he wanted, but he was there. Um, Recluse, still on with us. Jose Dominguez, Victor Sinclair Cigars. Let me tell you, the, some of these people, we don't even carry their brands. Right. And, and here they are. Um, Don Raphael, J.C. Newman with Diamond Crown. They were early on. Yep. Integral Lighters, we've been working with them. Uh, and, you know, they never say anything. They never stop, Mr. Jonathan, on the big ass tank. There, because there's no big it's ass patented. tank. There is no patent. In it's Nora the either. patented Vertigo big ass tank. They let us go on the way they let us go on, and they, they really need to come out with the Vertigo bat. Bat, big, big ass, ass tank. tank. Oh, can you follow along with the I show do, that you're on? No, but I'm not good at those. Whatever you call acronyms, when, acronyms, spelling. Our friends from Asylum. And we're going to have uh, Christian Aroa coming up, uh, and me maybe he will do an Ashholes episode because I think he's coming on a Wednesday. Maybe they, they're not doing they it on Tuesday. on Tuesday. Yeah, maybe he'll come up early for that. Um, Perdomo. Um, also and, early on. Yeah. Uh, Miami Cigar. Yeah. Uh, I would say thanks to Barry. Barry landed that one. Mr. Jonathan hasn't landed one yet, but I appreciate Jason coming on board. Yes, I have, uh, <clears throat> we, we have a whole segment coming up after the show that would disagree with you well, on that. Okay, um, Drew Estates, Drew Estates on board. Padrone, which was a big score mm. when when uh, they contacted us and said, "Of course, we want to support your show. It's good for the industry." Sereno, they started. Great. I don't think they even had their brand out on, on there yet. When they jumped on board with us, that's APS Cigars, Sereno, uh, who now have other brands. Yeah. Uh, Christoph is on board. Uh, Indian Head Cigars, which is Hochi Blanco. And uh, they have four different commercials uh, on their show of um, La Galera. And um, what am I forgetting here? Right? Indian Head. Is Indian Head one of no, the Rough no. Rider. Rough, Rough Rider. Rider. Rough Rider. Uh, Rocky Patel on board. JRE, that's Aladino. Mm -hmm. On board with us, the folks from Altadas, and that all started with the aging room um, and which Old Fat Freddy. Which is the most missed segment. Yes. People always tell us to bring it back, and as I say it, pops up Rudy's request in it. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> that was funny when, when he stopped doing it, and he said, you know, here's a regular commercial for you guys to read. And he liked it, too, the Rafael Nadell. Yep. And he stopped us, and we didn't know why. Did we say something wrong? Because we said things wrong right from the get-go on that mm -hmm. thing. So there, there was one that I can remember, and I'm not going to mention the content, but it went awry. Yeah. And uh, your buddy Fal pulled me aside at the end of the show, and he goes, "Too far, too far, too far." <laughs> and he's a guy who can. He's like, yeah. "Listen, I could take a joke like anybody else. That was too far." Yeah. Um, and then, as it turned out. It was acquisition time was going right. on, so they had to back off that. Uh, and Cigar Journal, Cigar Journal Magazine, who not only uh, advertise with us, they also um, have given us the award uh, a couple of years ago. Yep. Um, and we're on their tasting panel. Yeah, what was the award? Um, Let me look Ambassadors of Cigars. Ambassadors of Cigars. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. So very, very nice, and without them, we could not be going on, and we are going to continue to go on, though. We're going to keep, keep this up. We're going to break the records for sure, and then we'll talk about uh, if, you know, you, you got to leave on a high note, right? Do you, yeah, you're going to pull a Seinfeld? Well, you don't leave when it's falling apart, and oh, my God, you got to let it go. You know, and, and it, as we're going to have somebody on in our 500th episode, the reason why this five, we have to hit 500 episodes is somebody went and they left on a high note. You know, and there's something to be said about yeah, that. Yeah, you can't stop at 502. He had you the greatest go. intro of any cigar podcast. It was just signature. As soon yep. as you heard it, you knew it's what, what it was. 
We've gone through many. Yes, we and, have. And I, and I listen to some of the early ones and know why some of these shows don't exist anymore is because we had real music in them. And because of that, YouTube and... Things and got booted. Plug, yeah, they boot them off because you, you can't use licensed music. But we did have a new intro that we only used once, which uh, your brother did. <laughs> the Cigar Authority. Thank God we only used it once. Yeah. Thankfully, he can make a cake a lot better than an intro. Oh. Wow. It's the Cigar Authority. Simple <laughs> band necessity. It's the band necessities, right? If you knew how long that poor bastard worked on that, you would not be <laughs> shitting on him. Three months. Three months. Wow. Wow. Um, do you remember what happened, episode one? Episode one. Uh, Victor Vitali was on. Are we the one that was aired or the one that wasn't aired? Well, there were three different people I get it confused with. We had Victor Vitali in studio. We had Christian Aroa on the phone. And, and then Nick we had Perdomo Nick Perdomo on the, on the phone. So the two that we practiced on yeah. that night was uh, Nick Perdomo and Christian Aroa. They both have no idea why I have their cell phone numbers, but I do, and it's from them. And that's okay. And then the first live show was Victor Vitali came in in studio. All right. Okay. All right. It's time for the Classic Three-Way, brought to you by Classic Cigars. <coughs> You've heard of epic rap battles. <laughs> but now it's time for the epic battle. Wow. It's kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. For this day. Tell anyone about this, I'll f***ing kill you. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. In classic history. Here's looking at you, kid. Brought to you by Classic Cigars. Nervous? Yes. All classic cigars are handmade and imported from the Dominican Republic, and every cigar is priced under, get this, under $3 per cigar. You like that, baby? Let him know where I came from, yeah! Choose any blend, including the Classic Connecticut for its mild and smooth taste, the Classic Maduro for its bold and spicy flavor, or the Classic Cuban for its sweet, sun-grown, and nutty overtones. That's Undertones, you idiot! Whichever classic you choose, it's a classic cigar. Available at twoguyscigars.com. That's twoguyscigars.com. Celebrate today with a classic cigar. Mr. Jonathan, our champion. I believe I am. Yes, you right. are. Because he got something that no heterosexual man should have known. <laughs> Which is what? Ricky uh, Martin's birthday, was it? Yeah, Ricky Martin's yeah. birthday. All right. I think he celebrated I think it was it. when Ricky Martin released his song, Live in La Vida Loca, and it became number one. And he got two points. All right. right. Yeah, same, same. Oh, all right. Then everybody knows that. Yeah, right. Well, he used to be in the club every weekend, <laughs> dancing with the other men to it. <laughs> Taking them out for drinks after. When my brother yes. punches you Underage. on your way by, it's yeah. because you offended both of us. <laughs> Mr. Jonathan, today is March 30th. U.S. buys Alaska from Russia for $7,200,000. What a deal. Imagine that. That's two cents an acre is what they paid. Two cents an acre. Well, they weren't using Good it. Good deal. Uh, I'm gonna still, go. you could have got three cents from any other country. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to say 1947. 1947. I'm going to say 59. 1959. See, I'm going to go really low because I think they're thinking of when it became a state versus when it was purchased. So I'm going to go 1700. For the win. 1700. 1867. And I kind of gave him 1947. Hmm. 1959. All uh, I'm going to say but is... But he's that, right. We were thinking of when it became a state. I'm already under protest right now because Ed Sullivan did not write that down. He played the men on that game. Yeah. But whatever. Whatever. Ricky Martin. Barry Stein. 15th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution is adopted, granting the right to vote regardless of race. 15th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution uh, is adopted, guaranteeing the right to vote regardless of race. Can't even subtract two on that one, buddy, because you're not even in the ballpark. 1928. 1928. Ed uh, Sullivan? Or 1952. 1952. 19, I'm sorry, 1799. For the point. Yes. 1799. I think you played the man too, Mr. Jonathan. It's written down, though. See, right. that's how the game is played. It was 1870. 1870, Mr. Jonathan will take the point, and it is over to Ed Sullivan. 
rock, a blues guitarist, singer-songwriter, Eric Clapton, one of the most important influential guitarists of all time, and customer <coughs> of Two Guys Smoke Shop. One time. I waited on him one time. <laughs> really? Yep. He was born oh, today. he was at the laundromat or something, right? No. He no, was, he was, was playing. a different guy? Yeah. Eric Clapton came in for cigarettes years ago in the 80s. But he was born what year? 1942. 42. 1947. 47. 45. 45. Somebody's got two points. Barry Stein. Damn it. Two points. 45 is correct. And back over to Mr. Jonathan. One question left and one tiebreaker. Hmm. Two S questions left. Well, hmm. it's two to one to one. Sion, Celine Dion emerged as a teen star in French-speaking world becoming, uh, before releasing her English-language album, which made her a North American celebrity, eventually global pop star. She's renowned for her technical skills and powerful vocals. Celine Dion, born today, what year? Also discovered by David Foster, who discovered Michael Bublé. She was born in 1952. 52. 63. 63. 1957. 57. Barry will take the point. He said 63. It's 68. Barry has three points. One to one. This game is over. We have a new champion, ladies and gentlemen. He's a champion of the whole nine years right now. <laughs> No, he's not. That's not how the game is. No, played. no, it's the well, first when you, of the year. When you do it on the last show of the year, you were the champion for the year. Correct, right? and I'm still the champion for the year. You guys are. We're, I, well, we're doing this practice stuff well, to build up to that one year. Day. I'm the champion of the century, uh, decade, the decade. Figure yeah. out what what it is, and then let me know. Hmm. I got my uh, tiebreaker, James Cagney. He died today. 1974. 81. What, it's the he year died. he died? Yeah. Uh, 68. Mr. Jonathan would have took that, too. It's well, 86. He knows a lot of stuff. Nailed he knows it. stuff. He's uh, a big deal. Kind of. That, that used to be one of our starts of the show. Should we redo a new show intro? Yes. yes. We usually change it We should it every do a year. shorter one with less talking. Yeah? yeah. All right. Just everybody little. already knows who we are, whether we like it or not. Not if, everybody. If you do sound bites, I want something from Escape from New York. Send it to us. Send us your sound bites. Send us your thoughts and thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. <laughs> the, my, my cigar went out on me. That's a shame. I'm going to relight. All right. The following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of the CigarAuthority.com. And Mark writes, hey, guys, I got back into smoking cigars a little over a year ago. And found the show shortly after. I've enjoyed listening on my weekly commute to work. I'm from Florida, but 20 years ago, I moved to New Zealand. One of the things over here, over the years, has been the attack on tobacco, which includes all cigars. There is no advertising allowed, and all tobacco products have to be hidden from view. The local merchant only sells Cuban cigars, and the quality can be hit or miss at best. We have an online merchant who ships overnight, but prices have gotten to the point that enjoying more than a couple cigars a week has gotten prohibitive. A recent Facebook post has noted the, light, the last excise increase has now put the cost at 600% per cigar. Oh, my God. To give you an idea, at twoguyscigars.com, Liga Pravada number 9 is $13.69. In New Zealand, it costs you $50 per cigar. Wow. Everything else is pretty much the same, meaning it's all in line with that, yeah. that price increase. So you enjoy these premium cigars, spare a thought and consider how lucky you are that every time you hear of new legislation on tobacco, you need to consider what you can do to make your voice heard. Absolutely. Keep up the great content. Mark, Florida boy living in a little land down under. So as the, so, here's what they end up doing to the poor stores that are down there. The stores are out of business, right? Uh, so they find online guys that they buy from. So that is the, the end of the retailer. Then we're talking about advertising. Any place that they would advertise there does not have advertising. So he goes online, he listens to the Cigar Authority show, and he has all the advertising on it. So they didn't stop the advertising. They just stopped their people right. from getting any money from the advertising. So that's what happens to each state and city. Cities that are putting tobacco, uh, changing the laws of uh, when you can buy, they go online or they go to the next city over or the next state over. So all they're doing is hurting the people within their state. They're not, because it's the beginning of trying to outlaw it, is what they're trying to do. 
And it's, it's just such bullshit. And what you got to do is fight for it. Even when they talk, tell you, listen, this is a battle you're not going to win, you go and fight anyway. Absolutely. You fight and let them beat, beat you if it happens. But many surprises happen. They hear you loud and clear, and they understand. You got is it work to do? Yeah, I'll be in uh, City Hall on Monday for Nashua, who's trying to go twenty one. And uh, we went last month, and they ta- after we said what we said, they tabled it, which is okay. We're going to table it, and hopefully these guys won't show up next time. Right. So I got to be there. Do I want to be there? <clears throat> I got other things to do, but I have to be there and. Win or lose, we're gonna we're gonna fight. There, there were some hopeful comments in the uh, national newspaper about people saying uh, on the panel saying we might be overstepping. Absolutely, our so might th- be. They might be thinking about it, and hopefully this will turn out. I'll tell you, the first meeting did not go well. Mm-hmm. I walked out of there and I said, "Oh my God, these guys are going to yeah. do it." Yeah, I was very surprised the next day to see the quotes from some of the uh, the council people. Yeah. It's, it's, it's overstepping. It's ridiculous because in the same breath, legalizing marijuana, at the same breath, uh, 16 to vote. Uh, the biggest thing, as I say, you can be on a jury at 18. Yep. You can decide someone's fate. Yeah. If you can Yet control you can't somebody's make it off life, why can't you control yeah. your own life? Yeah. And, you know, they, they said, <clears throat> we don't want to hear all this thing about the military. You can join the military, you know, because they heard that. Okay, let me go to uh, let me go to this one that, you know, yeah. g- guy's going to decide if, if this guy's guilty or not guilty. His br- their brains aren't developed enough to make decisions whether to have a cigar or not. That's their thing of, right. uh, of a 20-year-old because they want to go to 21. Mm-hmm. So, it, you know, they automatically go to, to 18 and say, yeah, we don't think an 18-year-old's mind is developed enough. How about a 20-year-old? Because he can't smoke it either. So a 20-year-old, his mind isn't developed enough to choose whether to get a cigar or not, but he can vote, join the military, he can uh, be, drive a car, yeah, do all these things, but his brain isn't developed. <laughs> the person whose brain isn't developed enough is the person sitting on the panel. May, I don't think you should leave with that. Na- na- very don't narrow leave with that. Minded. Don't leave with that. No. All right. So don't forget, everybody, the after show recorded immediately following this show. We're going to do it uh, and bring Terrence Riley. We get some tough questions for him. And uh, we're going to end up smoking these burritos and tell us what we're smoking with there. Next week, his identity will be disguised and his name will never be revealed. But we will hear the ugly and disturbing views from a cigar rep known as Rep X. Until then, you've been listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And if you've learned nothing in the last two hours, always remember to keep the lid end out of your mouth. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.